She said to me, wedging is the most important part of pottery making. A 92-year-old woman shared with me that one of the most important steps in making pottery, like we looked at two weeks ago with the concept of, from Daniel Iverson's song, Melt Me, Mold Me, one of the most important concepts in that is that the clay has to be prepared. And as you begin to work with the clay, she said, you work it and work it and work it, and suddenly you find a pebble that's in the clay, and you pull that and throw it aside, and you continue to work with the clay and throw out the impurities, because she said, if you do not pull those pebbles out, you can shape the most beautiful pot on the wheel and place it in that kiln, and when it is hit with those high temperatures, it will crack, it will break under that pressure. The image, the analogy is beautiful for us, that we have got to be aware of the of the impurities in us or when the difficult times come in our lives we will break and God wants us to be pure and able to be vessels that can be filled so that we can do God's work now I, I you know I think that we are guilty oftentimes of focusing on the outward image I don't know how much is spent on cosmetics not just women but men as well so that we can look good on the outside. But God is intent on looking not only at the outside of a person, but particularly at the inside, at the heart and at the soul of each of us. And many of us are really guilty of working more on our outward image than on our hearts. Now, even though we have known each other for just about a year, you have learned that I love music. I love all kinds of music, whether it be classical or bluegrass or gospel or contemporary or jazz or R&B or country and occasionally even rap. I am blessed by the gifts of those who compose and write songs. And sometimes, however, we musicians may appear to have it all together on the outside, and yet our insides, our hearts, are hurting and broken. I heard a country song one day, the refrain of which went something like this, I can tell by her eyes that she ain't got no alibi. I didn't want to point out that a double negative means a positive, which means that she has an alibi. Sorry. (laughs) Or it's like the Eagles song, Lion Eyes. The verses of these songs paint pictures of extramarital affairs and are often beautifully presented on stage with the latest in lighting and sound and technology and expensive clothing with 10-gallon hats. But the message is sad, wrong, and broken. You and I know of folks who present ourselves well on the outside to the world, but maybe are extremely harsh on our families or our neighbors. We know of adults who abuse children verbally or physically. We know of preachers who speak sweetly to their congregations but are grossly short on patience at home. We sing, melt me, mold me, fill me. So what is it that we are asking God to fill us with? Scripture says that being full or filled is a beautiful concept. In fact, in Scripture, it's over 250 times that the concept of full or filled is used in the scripture. In the Old Testament, the concept, it says that, uh, that our world is filled with cities and fruit and dead bodies and abominations and blood and violence and food and water and laughter and enjoyment and arguments and drunkenness and haughtiness and at times filled with the kavod, the glory of God. In the New Testament, it speaks more of people being filled with awe and rage and fury and madness and envy and confusion and joy and peace and the Holy Spirit. Psalm 107 verse 9 says, For God satisfies the thirsty and the hungry, God fills with good things. Just like baby birds will crane their necks, opening their mouths when the mother lights on the nest with a worm, God says in Psalm 81, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth and I will fill it. With what? With what does the Lord desire to fill you and me? Certainly with good things, but we need to beware. Scripture warns us that people often stray from the Lord when we become satisfied with good things. How so? Well, Barb read it from Deuteronomy 31 verse 20. God says... When I have brought them into the land flowing with milk and honey, which I promised on oath to their ancestors, 
and they have eaten their fill and they have grown fat, they will turn to other gods and serve them, despising me and breaking my covenant. God cautions you and me when we get filled, when we become satisfied, when we are often tempted to turn away from God. Is that not the case in our world? The, the Oscars happened recently, and those watching wondered whether Arrival or Fences or Hacksaw Ridge or Hell or High Water or Hidden Figures or La La Land or Lion or Manchester by the Sea or Moonlight would win Best Picture. In probably the worst mistake in awards ceremony history, Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway were accidentally handed the envelope for the Best female actress, which was from La La Land, Emma Stone. And so they said, best picture, La La Land, to which Pricewaterhouse and Cooper accountants came running out onto the stage and said, no, 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 it's Moonlight. And everybody was just like, the problem, we make mistakes, but you and I don't tend to do it in front of millions of people. So we don't want to be too hard on folks, but I think they do have a different accounting company. I had gotten so used, Terry, to saying Pricewaterhouse and Cooper, because we always hear that. But we all, amidst, amidst all that glitz and glamour of the, of the red carpet at the Oscars, it makes me wonder, okay, that's what we look like on the outside. What are we like on the inside? And a lot of times, actors and actresses are very gifted humanitarians, save the children, doctors without borders, food for the hungry, but I wonder about their dependence upon God, their dependence, you know, upon the Lord or whether they depend upon themselves. Unless we point fingers too quickly, how many of us have become successful at work or in life and find ourselves slipping in our daily communication with God? How many of us would not think about missing a child's ball game but don't press them to get to Sunday school as often as we can? Where are our priorities? With what are we filled? So Jesus met the Samaritan woman at the well in John chapter 4. He dropped all of the accepted prejudices of the day to ask her for a drink. What? She says. What? You, a Jew, asking a drink of me, a Samaritan woman? And then Jesus tells her that if she knows him, she will ask him for living water. Still thinking that he is referring to physical water, she replies, well, why, you don't even have a bucket, and the well is deep. You know, where will you get this living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob? And Jesus looks at her and says, whoever drinks of this water will never be thirsty again. Have you ever been thirsty? I mean, really thirsty? Imagine this. We're in Yellowstone National Park doing Christian ministry in the parks. I'm a young adult, and I'm sorry, but sometimes as young adults, we didn't have our brains fully developed. Now, young adults will say, and 61-year-olds don't have their brains fully developed, and I said, that's true. Um, but we, I decided, since I was the leader of our group, that I would take the five of us to hike down into the canyon at Yellowstone, just at the base of the upper falls of the Yellowstone River, and that we would go down into what's called Seven Mile Hole. It's a trail that goes 10.2 miles down and then 10.2 miles back out. Now, we took in our sandwiches and we took in water, but we knew that 68,000 gallons of water per second are coming off of that fall. So, Rob, we didn't think about carrying more water than what we needed on the way down. So we get down there. We enjoy our meal. I, the great leader, unscrew my water bottle and walk over towards the river and I see a sign that says, warning, not fit for human consumption. <laughs> oh, goodness, no. I mean, I'm seeing all this water go by, but because of the sulfur content in the water, it will destroy your kidneys. So I'm sitting there going, this is not good. And they're all going, Fred, you're our leader. So we started hiking out, and we start walking and walking and walking and walking and switch back and switch back, and we're about two miles from the top. Somebody says, you're almost there, and I go, no, we're not. And then Dorothy from New York, one of the leaders, sits down and says, I want to die. 
And I say, you can't. I can't call your mom and tell her that I left you in the canyon. So I sort of scoop her up, and Laura continues to lead us, and we finally get up to the top, and we run for a spigot that's up there at the picnic area, and we you know, turn it on, and all of us are getting under it. That's thirst. Jesus says to the woman at the well, you will not be thirsty again if you drink the water that I am here to provide you with. People will always be thirsty with physical water or lack thereof, but you will never be thirsty if you let me fill you. And with what does God fill us? Well, one of the texts from Ephesians says that God fills us with peace and hope and love in the Holy Spirit. That God fills us with not, not bad things, but God fills us with, with uh, tools for living life, living life fully. And we will never be thirsty again when we are in the presence of Christ, the living water. I praise God for this woman at the well and this tremendous conversation that they shared together where God promises to fill us. Ephesians 5, 8 says don't get drunk with wine for that is debauchery but be filled there's that word with the spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves a Tatum that song that you sang is so powerful to me because I've learned that song years ago thy word is a lamp unto my feet and it feeds me and I will have that do y'all ever have a song worm what do you call it Throughout the day, I'm going to be 4 o'clock this afternoon. I'm still going to be going, thy word. Yes, I. It happens. It's filled with singing and making melody to the Lord with your hearts. Giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God the potter is ready to fill us. But remember, being filled means being willing to overflow to those around us. If they should need our love and support and energy to the point that we feel drained, that is good. Pray to the Lord and the Spirit of the living God will fill you again and again so that you may overflow again and again and again. Do you want to be filled today? Then ask God to do it. Let's pray the prayer by singing. Spirit of the living God. Do it with me. Fall afresh on me. Spirit. 